So I recently gave myself a 30 day challenge. I'm going to live full time for the next 30 days in a tiling window manager. And I'm going to use, where possible, terminal based applications only. This is day one. Let's see how I'm doing. So my self-imposed 30 day challenge. I'm going to live inside a tiling window manager of my choice. Um, I actually, this is really more like day two rather than day one. I'm officially calling this day one though. I did install some stuff yesterday when I made the uh, announcement video that I was doing this challenge. I went ahead and installed a tiling window manager called Qtile. Qtile is one of my favorite tiling window managers. I really like the way it handles multi-monitors and I like that it's configured in Python. So I know a little Python. I can kind of get around in Python a little bit. At some point, I'm probably going, going to also install Xmonad and live in Xmonad for a few days during this challenge as well, because I like Xmonad. And I think it would be fun to uh, configure an X Xmonad session during this 30 day challenge. Uh, one of the things you will notice is the colors. I actually created this uh, wallpaper here using the Solarize theme. There's a very popular terminal uh, color scheme called Solarized. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. Uh, many of your terminal emulators, such as the GNOME terminal, KDE's console, the XFCE terminal, etc., already have the Solarize theme built into them. Uh, if you go to your preferences and your uh, color settings, usually they have an option to set Solarize as your theme. I'm actually using the Termite terminal, so it's a little bit more involved how I need to do uh, set up the Solarized color scheme what I needed to do was I went to github and I found someone's termite config file and they had their the solarized dark theme set in their colors so I just copied basically their color scheme here and pasted that in my termite config so that now my termite terminal uses the solarized dark theme uh, very easy on the eyes is the reason I went with Solarize. Plus, I didn't want to spend a lot of time, you know, fiddling around with theming. You can waste hours and hours doing that. Uh, I mean, just go to a subreddit like Unix Porn and see the kind of uh, time people put into creating their own custom terminal color schemes. And while that's fun and creative, and uh, I, I would probably enjoy doing that, it is time consuming. I'm just, I just want to use a color scheme that works out of the box and solarized is very popular and it's very popular for a reason. The solarized theme is pretty easy on the eyes. And if I'm going to live full time in the terminal hours on the end, you know, every day, you know, I want something that is easy on the eyes and the solarized theme is really easy on the eyes. I, I have to admit it's a really, really sharp uh, color scheme here. I'm just opening up a, few programs here to show you a little bit of the solarized color scheme. Really good stuff there. Um, the other thing I needed to do, if I'm going to live in a terminal full time, email. Email was one of the ones that uh, I haven't done before in a terminal. I've always used Thunderbird for a GUI email client. So this one I knew was going to be a little tough having never set up a uh, terminal based email client before, but I went ahead and downloaded MUT. Well, actually Neo MUT. I installed Neo MUT, which is a, uh, a fork of the old MUT email client. Anyway, let me open up MUT here. And this is basically the MUT email client. Uh, I've only got three emails here. I actually created a brand new email address just for me for this channel. For this project, actually, um, my new email address, uh, and you guys are free to email me anytime uh, with questions or comments about the channel, Derek at distrotube.com. And let me see, let me pull up one of these messages. So uh, right here, Derek at distrotube.com. And uh, again, feel free to email me anytime. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to check this email that often, you know, at least once a day probably, but it's not my normal email address I use on a daily basis. I just recently uh, 
bought that particular domain name, the distrotube.com domain name. I have not put a, a website on it yet. I will eventually get around to building a website and putting it up at distrotube.com. But I did create the Derek at distrotube.com email address for purposes of this channel. Now, MUT. MUT is pretty simple to use. Uh, again, it lists my emails right here. I can just cycle through them. Actually, I can cycle through them when I have them open. Pretty cool stuff. If I want to send a message, I type M and you see the box at the bottom to I to whoever. So your name at whatever dot com to send this mail subject. This is the subject. And then it looks like nano opens up. I wonder if I can configure this to use Vim. I bet I could because I remember I said I was only going to going to use Vim as my text editor for the next 30 days. So I need to get rid of this. I don't want to use Vim. I mean, I don't want to use Nano. I need to use Vim. So I need to see if I can change this. I bet just uninstalling Nano would probably force it to uh, open this in Vim. But we'll see. Anyway, you type your message. And then Nano, Control X to leave. Yes to uh, save it. And it's saving it to uh, the slash temp folder. And that is it. Uh, you hit Y to send it. And it's not going to send it. Oh, actually, it did send it. Okay. Well, uh, I, I don't even, I just created an email address out of my head. Somebody is going to get some random email from me if that email address actually exists. Oh, well. Anyway, how do you config MUT? Now, MUT was kind of a pain to config. Let me open up the Ranger File Manager. And let's see, our hidden folders and the Ranger File Manager, Control-H, I believe, shows the hidden folders. Yeah. So in your home folder, you have the .config folder, that hidden folder that saves all your config files for your various programs. And in this folder, I have NeoMut. And I have the NeoMut RC file. That is the NeoMut config file. Now this, of course, opens that config file in Vim. And this is my NeoMut. Oh, you, did you guys notice here in MUT? I got a, a returned email, returning message to sender, mail delivery failed. So that random email that I created, sending to some random address, that didn't exist. <laughs> I'm kind of glad it didn't. That would have been bad, just sending somebody a random email like that. Anyway, uh, the MUT RC file. Pretty much everything right here that I have this comment says my settings. This is what I needed to add to create. Uh, the MUT config file so that it properly receives and sends email. I won't go into detail about it, but you need to set, of course, your username. You need to set your pass, uh, the folder, uh, spool file, mailboxes. You need to set up SMTP to send mail. This was a little tricky, actually, the SMTP part. Uh, I needed to make sure that I, it was SMTPS in the address here. And I also needed to make sure the port was 465. I think by default, uh, a lot of people set it to 587. That didn't work. It, it took me a good half an hour to figure out how to get SMTP to work here. But once it, it's working correctly, uh, you know, it's pretty straightforward. I'm actually enjoying the MUT email client. I, I'm glad I, I'm, I'm using it. I may actually just switch to MUT full time even after this 30 day challenge and just quit using Thunderbird. I like MUT that much. I, I, th I think I can I think I can live without Thunderbird. So that's some of the big things that I wanted to initially focus on early in this challenge was getting the color scheme set in the terminal because again, every single program I use for the most part is going to be a terminal based application. So I really wanted to make sure I like the uh, solarized dark color scheme and everything was set to that. Again, I, I need to play around with some of each program's config files because, you know, some of them don't show the solarized color scheme in a way that's readable. Some of them do like light background, light foregrounds in certain areas. And, you know, I need to play around with the, the uh, arrangement of the colors a little bit. But for the most part, I'm really liking the solarized color scheme and I needed to set up email properly. Email was going to be a tough one because I had never used terminal based email applications before. Uh, 
web browser, got that squared away. I've used links for years, so I'll be comfortable living in a terminal-based web browser, a file manager the same. I don't mind living in the Ranger file manager. Of course, I can always just do all my file management straight in the shell. I can just open up a terminal and CD around the directory structure, copy, remove, make files, make directories, all from the command line. I don't really need to even use Ranger for the most part. But I'm going to try to use Ranger a little more because Ranger, I think, can be a very powerful program uh, once I know a little more about it. Uh, anyway, that was day one. One thing I will say, making this video. Today I made this video using OBS because I always use OBS to make these videos. Some of you commented that I could probably get away with making these videos using FFmpeg. And I did briefly look into that. Matter of fact, I even recorded some test video just to see how FFmpeg would work. And yes, I could actually record my desktop, record desktop audio and everything using FFmpeg. I did some test videos of it. The reason I'm not going to use FFmpeg to do my videos and any live streams I may do for the next month is because you can't really do everything in the terminal. For example, if I'm live streaming using FFmpeg, and I can do that, uh, how do I monitor how the live stream is going? Well, I would have to open up a graphical program of some kind anyway, VLC or the web browser or whatever. So I'm still going to have to use a graphical program to do that. I might as well just stream in OBS. Um, plus transitioning between scenes like here in OBS, you see this, I'm looking at you here, I can quickly transition to my desktop here just with a click of a mouse or have it hotkeyed and then quickly transition to the screen here looking at a web browser on a different monitor. Of course, I've got my intro and outro that play at the beginning and the end of the videos. How do I do that, you know, with FFmpeg in the terminal? That would be a little bit more of a challenge to do something like that, plus the webcam. This webcam, for example, on the desktop, I actually don't have a program open on my desktop. GUVC View or a Cheese or Voco Screen, any of those webcam apps. This is not those. This is actually part of OBS. It is putting that on the screen for me without me manually open, opening a webcam program. If I had a webcam program actually open on this desktop, when I start opening windows and tiling around, my webcam program is going to tile around and it's going to mess things up. So this is partly another reason why I need to use something like OBS is because of how it puts the webcam overlaid on the screen. So I will continue to use graphical programs uh, for the multimedia aspects of uh, doing this channel, recording video, streaming video, and editing video. I'm going to use Caden Live still to edit my videos. Uh, I don't want to, you know, play around with that stuff too much because... You know, I just want to stick with what works. Uh, but again, for just typical daily web browsing, email, file management, uh, viewing social media, that sort of thing, I'm going to try to do everything I can in the terminal. And I'm definitely only using tiling window managers for the next 30 days. And I'm going to only use Vim for the next 30 days. I was actually surprised that the Mutt email client opened up Nano. I need to delete Nano. I need to get rid of Nano off this computer completely. That way, these programs that have Nano set as the default text editor, they have no choice but to open up Vim. Vim will on be the only text editor on this system for the next 30 days. Anyway, before I leave, I do want to do a special thanks to all my patrons. Ron, Brian, Carl, Greg, Carlos, Rob, Mark, Christian, Benjamin, Stephen, Marcus, Kevin, Bob, and Darkwin. You guys rock. You guys are help supporting this channel. Peace, guys.